Hello everybody, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor, with today's option selling question of the day. Today's question comes from Ron. Alan, Tesla will be added to the S&P on 1218. Presumably, there'll be a lot of rebalancing uh, related buying towards the end of the week. There should be increased volatility in that stock. Normally, I would not buy the stock because of various fundamental factors. In this instance, however, I'm thinking of selling one week puts about 50 points out of the money. I realize that there is a potentially unlimited risk. However, I think the upside substantially outweighs the downside risk. Also, the option should yield a hefty premium. I'm prepared to assume the risk. Thanks, Ron. Now, even though this isn't framed as a question, I felt that inherent in the email was Ron asking me what my thoughts were on this approach to Tesla. Now, Ron mentioned that there were hefty option premiums associated with the stock at that time. Whenever there's high premiums, that means there's high implied volatility in those options. So let's analyze this situation, and we'll start off by discussing what is implied volatility and the impact it has on our trades. Well, IV is a forecast of the stock's volatility as implied by the option prices. Now, typically, it's represented by a one-year time frame and based on one standard deviation, which means that it's expected to fall into that trading range 68% of the time. So the accuracy of IV stats is about 68%. So we have to keep that in mind. And also, the implied volatility stats are not based on a particular contract, but rather a one-year time frame. Now, of course, the higher the implied volatility, the larger the option premiums. That's the good news. But also, the higher the implied volatility, the greater the risk. And that's where we have to evaluate whether or not we're willing to undertake that amount of risk. Now, I want to add a dimension to our analysis of a trade of this nature, and that is delta. Now, delta actually can be defined from three perspectives. First, it's the amount that an option price will change for every $1 change of the underlying security. Second way of defining delta, it's the equivalent number of shares represented by the option. As an example, one call option contract with a delta of 50 is the equivalent of 50 shares. A lot of times when portfolio managers uh, decide they want to have a delta neutral portfolio, that's how options are factored in. And of course, a delta neutral portfolio would reduce or eliminate market risk. However, as it relates to Ron's trade, the way we would define delta is the percent likelihood an option will expire in the money or with intrinsic value. So as Ron entered this trade with Tesla, 50 points below current market value, the assumption is, is that the option will not be exercised. It will not be have intrinsic value at expiration because $50 is such a long way from uh, where the price is today. However, as we're going to see in a moment, that is not the way to measure risk in a trade like this. Let's go to a one-week put option chain at the time I received this email uh, from Ron regarding Tesla Inc., which trades on the NASDAQ exchange under the ticker symbol TSLA. Now, $50 under the current market value of $625 per share brings us to the $575 strike, where you see the arrow and the bid column t represents a premium of $19.75. Now, that 1975, when we sell a put, would generate 
percent in just one week. That annualizes out to 182 percent. Now, new investors might go, great, I'm in, count me in. That's wonderful. Look at that return. However, for most more established, sophisticated investors, that would be a huge red flag because returns like that often represent securities with a lot of risk. And certainly that's the case with Tesla and this particular option. Now, if we look at the red arrow to the right, that column is Delta. And once again, we're going to define Delta as the percent likelihood of the option expiring uh, with intrinsic value, which is what we don't want. In this case, 28% uh, probability that that stock will expire with intrinsic value, which would then force Ron to purchase the shares at the strike price. And who knows how far down it could go below the strike price. So uh, with a 28% chance of expiring in the money, do we like these odds? That is the question. Now I want to go to now the implied volatility that I looked up on the site www iVolatility.com. We put in the ticker symbol for Tesla, as you see at the top of the screenshot, and we look down and we see that the uh, mean implied volatility is 100.09%. Remember, that's uh, based on a one-year time frame uh, and a one standard deviation or 68% chance of accuracy. Now, just to give that a framework for comparison, at that moment, the implied volatility of the S&P 500 was 18%. So Tesla's implied volatility was five times that of the S&P 500. Once again, are we willing to take that kind of risk? Let's summarize. High option premiums result from high implied volatility stocks, which means high risk. Keep in mind, Covered call writing and selling cash secured puts are low risk option selling strategies. Do we want to turn that around to a high risk strategy by generating higher premiums? You know, one size doesn't fit, fit all and it might be right for some investors, but I would say for most conservative investors that have capital preservation in mind, this would not be a viable approach. Now, when selling puts, uh, and when we want to avoid exercise, which is what's implied in Ron's comments, we want to go with lower, lower delta options. Uh, that means a lower probability of the option expiring with intrinsic value or less likelihood of exercise and the shares being put to us. So to accomplish significant returns and avoid exercise with high IV stocks, we want to set a lower initial time value return goal range. Remember, in this case, Ron got 3.5% for just one week. So we want to go lower than that. So we want to go deeper out of the money or a lower strike price than the 575 that Ron selected at that point in time. And that will give us additional downside protection if the price of the stock declines below the original 575 strike price. So what do we do? Well, we're going to seek delta options with lower than the 28% that we saw with Tesla at that point in time. For me, uh, in a trade like this, I would go with deltas of 10 or less. That would generate lower premiums, but still significant premiums. And that would make all the difference in the world. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to uh, thank you all uh, very, very much for taking the time to listen to this uh, option selling Ask Allen uh, video. And uh, keep in mind now that when we sell our options, it's really all about keeping our risk down while still generating very significant annualized returns. And that's very doable, but we can't get greedy. So, Ron, thank you very, very much for uh, sharing. Uh, this trade with the BCI community. And for all you folks out there, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. And most importantly, I hope you make some money from it. As always, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. Take care, everybody.